Welcome back to another edition of Rudy's Rants from Come On Now, the podcast. I am your host, Rudy Rodriguez Showmott. Before we jump in, thank you for all your support and continued support of this channel as we grow it, clo- growing closer to 2,000 subscribers. Uh, we've only been in business now for just about six months and change. So just hitting six months, a little less than six months. So um, thank you again for your support. We greatly, greatly appreciate it. Let's talk about this uh, Indiana Fever Minnesota Lynx game today. Earlier, I gave my immediate recap of the game and my immediate feedback and talked about Caitlin Clark and so forth and how she had a monster fourth quarter to basically spur this rally from a seven-point deficit going into the fourth into a seven-point win, which was a monster, monster win for the Indiana Fever. But I would be remiss if I don't have some commentary on the absolutely horrendous coaching job that continues to happen in Indiana. Just a couple of days ago, we watched the Indiana Fever run the Phoenix Mercury off the floor for three quarters, only to see Christy Sides take the ball out of Caitlin Clark's hands and hand it to Erica Wheeler in the fourth quarter and subsequently see the lead dissolve in a matter of minutes to the point where it got down to, I believe it was four points with about four minutes or so to go in the game, maybe three minutes, but it was def- there was definitely enough time to completely blow that game. She took the ball from Caitlin Clark. They were up 31 points late in the third quarter. She pulls out Aaliyah Boston and Kelsey Mitchell. She leaves Caitlin Clark out there with Samuelson, Hull, Wheeler, and I think it was Dantas. Maybe it was Smith. Maybe it was one of the two, Dantas or Smith. And what subsequently happens is that Phoenix goes into a zone and the ball is taken out of Caitlin Clark's hands. It looked like the Indiana Fever have never seen a zone before. They've never practiced against a zone. They don't know how to attack a zone. There's three basic things that beat a zone. Shooting. Movement. Ball movement. And the high and the high post flashing to the middle. When they did that, they scored. But for the most part, they did none of that. There was time after time where Clark had didn't have the ball. She's basically wide open, weak side, and they never look her direction. <clears throat> she ends up having to bring back everyone on the floor, put all the starters back in, and the Fever escape with the win. A game that they absolutely dominated for three quarters. All because Christy Sides decides that she wants to take the ball to Caitlin Clark's hands. If you haven't noticed by now, this team runs based on what Caitlin Clark does. She is the offense. No question about it. She is the offense. She determines what happens. And if you decide as a coach that we're going to stop pushing the ball, it changes the offense. And Caitlin Clark obviously will give respect to her coach and do what her coach says, no matter how ungodly foolish the strategy is. The Indiana Fever are not good enough to go in half-court offensive sets. It's been proven over and over again. They have one offensive set that works. It's the pick and roll with Caitlin Clark and Aaliyah Boston. That's it. There's a few plays that work here and there when Kelsey Mitchell's left wide open and obviously shoots the ball because she never passes the ball once she sees it. But the play that works for the Indiana Fever in a half-court setting is the pick and roll with Aaliyah Boston and Caitlin Clark. I would much rather see Aaliyah Boston just roll to the rim more often than not because she pops out to the elbow or to the free throw line. and Sometimes then gives the ball up for no reason and makes it a more difficult situation because once that particular part of the play ends, if Aaliyah Boston's not scoring, they're not scoring. <clears throat> but that happens against Phoenix. 
So what would you think would happen you're going to play Minnesota, who has arguably one of the best defenses, if not the best defenses in the WNBA, missing a starter, Nafisa Collier. Why aren't you running? Why aren't you pushing tempo? Why are they walking the ball up the floor? I don't understand it. Christie Sides has them walking the ball up the floor. They're not running pick and roll to start the game. They're not pushing tempo off makes and misses. You can't just push off misses. You have to push on makes. That's what makes Caitlin Clark so damn good is that she can push off of makes. You got to run the floor at all times when she's on the court. But Christy Sides runs an offense today, determines that, you know what? Oh, they're, Minnesota's light on, is light on their team. They don't have all their players. They're missing their best player. And so guess what we're going to do? We're going to walk the ball up the floor. We're going to try to run half-court sets against the one of the better defensive teams. We're going to allow the defense to lock in on Caitlin Clark. We're going to take the ball out of her hand, have her dump it high post to Aaliyah Boston, Melissa Smith, whoever, and we're going to do exactly the opposite of what we did against Phoenix. Why? Because I said so. That's why they're going to do it, because Christy Side said so. It is exhausting watching this team play where they can look so incredible for a quarter like they did against Washington and look so ungodly bad for three quarters like they did in that same game that they lost. They can look so good for three quarters against Phoenix and then look so ungodly bad in the fourth quarter. Because Christy Sides made a decision to not push tempo. Did she watch how Caitlin Clark played at Iowa? I swear to God, you drafted somebody. Lynn Dunn, who is an awful general manager and who has had a lot of dumb things to say about Caitlin Clark herself, for which I have a video coming for that one because she is just another piece of work. You guys drafted her. Did you watch her play at Iowa? If you watched her play, you see what she does. She pushes the ball up the floor. Iowa's running, 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 running. If they could replace Melissa Smith today with Stalky from Iowa, they would. I'm sorry. If Caitlin Clark could replace Smith with Stalky, she would do it in a second. If she could replace Kelsey Mitchell with Kate Martin and bring her over from Vegas, she would do it in a second. If she could replace anyone and bring in Gabby Marshall, she'd probably do it in a second. Because those women know how to play with her. They know what she's going to do. They know how she's going to set them up for success. This team, outside of Aaliyah Boston, doesn't seem to understand that Caitlin Clark is setting them up for success. And Christy Sides is like, Remember they used to say that Dean Smith was the only guy that could keep Jordan under 20? Well, Christy Sides is the only one that can seem to keep Caitlin Clark from dominating a game by changing an offense every single day because she says so. It is frustrating as hell. So today, they walked the ball up the floor. Look, they were, they were in the game at halftime. They were in the game at halftime, in the game end of the first. It, it was neck and neck for the first half. But Caitlin Clark wasn't playing well. She was basically being taken out of the game by her own coach. Middle of the first quarter, she pulls Caitlin out of the game and then complete con- con- begins to undress her verbally on the sideline while she's standing on the sideline. That's real good, Christy Sides. Let's go embarrass your best player during the game. It went on for a, for, a, for, a, for a few seconds. It wasn't like a quick thing. It wasn't a quick thing. And you're undressing your best player on the sideline because of crap that you're telling them to do, which she knows is not the best way to play because of how she plays, how this team is. Defensively, they can't stop a parked car. They get beat so easily all over the place. And I do think that that seeped into Caitlin Clark today as she really didn't play well in the first half, the first three quarters. 
She was missing on some box outs. She just wasn't there. End of the third, she gets pulled. And they're down by seven going to the fourth. Clark starts the fourth quarter. And Clark did exactly what she did versus Washington. She took over the game. Now, I don't know if Christy Side says, go ahead, Caitlin, go handle your business. Or if Caitlin Clark said, screw you, coach. I want to win, and this is how we're going to win. I'd be perfectly okay with the second one because that's what superstars need to do. You drafted a player, and you are suffocating that player. You run no offense for that player. She missed some shots today that were open today because she was so out of rhythm early on that she would normally make. But man, oh man, the way that this woman coaches this team, they didn't win this game because of Christie's because of coaching. They won this game because those five women, on the, five women on the court or six women on the court who played in the fourth quarter made it happen. And Caitlin Clark led them to that. It's a fact. She led them to that. She bangs the three from the wing to start the quarter, and it switched something for her. She's pushing the ball up the floor. Caitlin Clark should never pick up her dribble, ever. She should never pick up her dribble. The crap that Kelsey Mitchell does when she dribbles in circles just to shoot, Caitlin Clark does that to find her team, can do that and find her team for layups because she's more concerned about getting her team involved because she knows without her teammates scoring easy buckets, they can't win. It's very rare that Aaliyah Boston has a contested shot on a pass from Caitlin Clark. It's very rare that Nalissa Smith has a contested shot on a pass from Caitlin Clark. Kelsey Mitchell never has a contested shot when she gets the ball from Caitlin Clark. Never. Lexi Hull, Hull can't make a freaking wide open jump shot one for six or one for seven today. Every shot she takes is absolutely wide open. Samuelson, same situation. But she knows that if she does not get those women involved, and she does not create easy buckets for them, they're not going to win, no matter what she does. So that's what her focus is all the time. And her coach is suffocating that. This team right now is 11 and 14, and they have one, two, definitely two losses that they should never have lost those games. They lost to the freaking Chicago Sky when they blew a 15-point lead, and they lost to the freaking Washington Mystics the other day. Those two losses are an example of Christy Sides doing what she does. They're 11 and 14. They could very easily be 13 and 12. And then they lost the game earlier this year to Seattle by two. <clears throat> but this coaching job is just getting, it just gets worse and worse. It's like they don't practice jump ball situations. They don't practice, I, I, I mean, they don't practice help side defense. They don't practice boxing out. They don't practice Zone, playing against the zone. They don't practice pushing the ball down the floor unless Caitlin Clark just decides we're going to push this ball. And of course, Caitlin Clark today had six turnovers. I think four of them, I would say, were on her. She had one where Kelsey Mitchell just fumbles the ball away, looking at the ball, and that's a bounce right past her when it's going right to her. Another one I think that was similar that she fumbled away. But Clark did not play well for three quarters. But in the fourth quarter, you saw a superstar. You saw a game changer. You saw her, despite the fact that her coach suffocated her for three quarters, suffocated that team, and it's exhausting to watch them play. Because you sit here and you see the ability, what they can do when you let this woman run. You're up 30 on Phoenix. I don't care that Diana Taurasi didn't play. I don't care that Natasha Cloud didn't play. I don't care that Brittany Griner got hurt and didn't play. I don't think Brittany Griner was really hurt. I think Brittany Griner, I think they saw, the coach for Phoenix saw that this game was too fast for Brittany Griner. And they were getting beaten down the court over and over again. And he just didn't put her back in. They were down 30 because Brittany Griner played today. Brittany Griner played today against Connecticut. She did not, I don't think she was hurt to the point where she couldn't go back. I think they decided this game is just too fast for her right now. <clears throat> you can't walk the ball up the floor with this team, with this player on your team. 
There's too many selfish cogs in this unit. Kelsey Mitchell is one of them. She's very selfish as a ball player. She can get she can get really, really hot, and she can also be really, really cold. But one thing she did never does is she never passes the ball. She is a she's a me first player, and she's always looking for her own shot. She'll never look for a teammate. It's very, very rare. She walked right by Caitlin Clark last game. Caitlin Clark's wide open for a three. And what does Kelsey Mitchell do? She drives the ball to the basket, goes around in a circle, comes back out. Shoots a three, misses a three. I mean, it's just like it's the same shit all the time. But then, you know, she has those spurts where she goes bang, bang, bang. They're always open. All her shots are open because no one's guarding her, really. Why? Because they're guarding Caitlin Clark. But Christy sides, I, I've, had, I, I've seen enough. I don't want to see any more. I don't, they can get rid of her. This is a time where you should be getting rid looking to dump this coach. I don't see how you're not. She's completely inexperienced. She's never been a head coach until coaching the Indiana Fever. She has no experience with a player like this, and it shows every single day. You need to adapt or die. That's how what life is. Adapt or die. If you cannot adapt to the situation that we have today, move the fuck on. Move on. Can you imagine? Like, like we work on email today. We work on Zoom today. We work on uh, um, e-filing today. We work on everything digitally. If you're working on paper, you're stuck in 1990. If you're a, 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 an office, a company, and you're not using the internet, you're not using social media, you're not using the things to market your company through different types of ways, separate of the phone book, you don't exist anymore. Adapt or die. And Christy Sides chooses to die as a coach. And she wants to die on that perch and die on what she believes and die on what she thinks is best. And it's costing the Indiana fever wins. It's making games harder on them that don't need to be this hard. They're not going to win every game. They're not talented enough as a group. They don't play together enough and play together for each other enough as a group. But there are two players on this team that are critical to their success. Caitlin Clark and Aaliyah Boston. If you're not running pick and roll six or seven times in the first quarter, there's a problem. Every first quarter, you should be running pick and roll, pick and roll, pick and roll, pick and roll. Caitlin Clark and Aaliyah Boston every single damn time down the floor. Melissa Smith should never have a play run for her. Never. She's not that type of player. Let her clean the glass. Let her get rebounds. Let her get putbacks. She is not the player that needs to have any plays run for her. Period. They run more plays for Kelsey Mitchell than they run for Caitlin Clark. They run more plays for Aaliyah Boston than they run for Caitlin Clark. They run more plays for Samuelson than they run for Caitlin Clark. It's flabbergasting to watch. But that's all I got. Great win by the Indiana Fever this afternoon. There's people on those players on the court made it happen in the fourth quarter. They locked down, they showed a purpose, and they went into Minnesota, which looked like a damn home game, by the way, for the Indiana Fever. And they took care of business and they improved 11 and 14. Kudos to all those young, all those women. Remember to like, follow, subscribe to us at Facebook, uh, Instagram, and TikTok at Come On Now Podcast and X at Come On Now Pod. Come on now.